welcome everyone. Urban Forestry Commission meeting March 16, 2022. Uh, I see that there is uh, this meeting is recorded. There is no one from the general public at the moment. If there is and they'd like to be recognized later on, we can take them out of order. Uh, I sent you the minutes earlier today. I don't know if you had a chance to read them. People want to take time to you read them. If you want to, if folks haven't read them, just let me know and let me know when you're finished reading them and we can. I'm reading them now. Okay, take your time. I'm apologizing in advance. I'm sorry for all the typos. I finished it late and just wanted to get off to Rich and I was looking at it today. I'm like, ooh, 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 sorry guys. <laughs> I didn't see too many typos. Uh, there's quite a few in there, sorry. <laughs> Is that something that I can fix if it's just like a, let, a matter of one letter being off or does it have to be amended by everybody? No, it's uh, called a Scribner's error. So like the Scribner's error can be fixed without actually having a, uh, a commission impact. Whole thing. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I had a question about something on the minutes. Um, under when Lily was talking about um, Florence Dental and the tree that was going to go in there, um, I was under the impression from what she said that it wasn't a done deal that that the dentist was um, disputing it and maybe it wasn't going to happen. But in the minutes, it sounded like it was going to happen. So I wasn't really clear on that. Um, I, let's wait till everyone's uh, finished because okay. I, I would like to amend the minutes to okay. what. I believe Lily said, although it's hard to, I, I, I was confused the same way as you were, my uh, Molly. I wasn't at the last meeting, Rich, so <clears throat> I'm going to be not included in this vote. I'm done, but I can't really vouch for everything in the STO changes. Okay, well, we're gonna have a discussion on that so we can, we can, uh, um, you know, make any, well, we can't change the minutes. So if, any, if no one else has any comments, I do have, Sue, do you have any other specific no. comments about that? Okay. Uh, Rob, are you you 
let us know when you're I, ready. I did not attend the meeting. Okay. But I am interested to read the minutes, which is good. No, I mean, that that's fine. I mean, you, you can actually comment on like... Um, I not comment, so but not vote. Good. Right. You can comment, but not so much on the content, but just on like grammatical things. Yeah. Structure. The only, um, the grammatical thing I found was in, um, in that paragraph about legislative findings and intent in the one, two, three, four, fifth, um, the fifth line down, it should say create instead of creates. Um, yeah, so the two questions I wasn't sure about um, if they were the, th the question about the Florence Dental Tree and the other question about um, the Main Street redesign. Um, I was under the impression that Lily wanted the UFC to um, have, um, you know, to participate and have input on that process. Um, but that wasn't clear in the in the um, minutes. And I wanted to, those, Sue and Rich, do you remember yep. that? So uh, I can speak to both, Sue, if you're okay with that. Yeah. The, um, yeah. so first of all, I didn't make any tree species recommendations to cool design. All I did was I reviewed the 25% design as one of the stakeholders as the tree warden. I didn't make any recommend, like specific recommendations like, Take this, they gave us, there is a list of trees that they recommended, a broad list. And all I did was I made comments about each one of those species based upon my knowledge of uh, how we've used them and how they, what they're recommended for. Um, and in that 25% design document, um, it said that the, you know, all tree species recommendations will be confirmed by the tree warden and the urban forestry commission. So the urban, so the 25% design was really uh, for, design, for the design purposes was to look at the tree placement and the suggested list of trees they had, which is all based upon our tree list and planting guidelines. So it's not my recommendations, I just wanted to make that clear. Um, the other item in regards to the Florence Dental parking space, the way that probably should read is that the, uh, she made the commission aware of um, that one of the proposed plantings is in a parking space at Florence Dental, which um, the owner of Florence Dental is um, opposes. Opposes, yes, they have yeah. the protest, but opposes the, the parking space being lost to plant a tree. But Wayne is basically still working on that with the uh, with the property owner because the city actually owns about a third of all the front of those uh, parking spaces. Oh. That's, what the, that's what the survey revealed um, from last uh, summer. Huh. So the right of way extends much you know farther beyond the hmm. back side of the sidewalk. So I, I'm, I'm in conversation with Wayne about this. So I, I think we'll be all right. So it's, it's either going to be a give up the one parking space or we're going to put trees in every single parking space. And then, then you're going to have to have parallel parking. <laughs> so, but anyways, I, I don't, that won't come to that. I think we can, we can work with the, uh, the property owner. That's probably how that should read. I don't know if anybody can cooperate that or if you're all, if you're all good with that. That sounds about right from okay. what, what I remember. Yeah. All right. Um, um, but what are the, as far as the Main Street redesign, um, what are the points where UFC can um, can get involved? Um, wh why don't I talk about that after we're done? Okay. That, that yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Does anyone else have any suggested changes or? No. Okay. No. Okay. Could I have a, a motion? to uh, accept the minutes as amended. 
I will make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. May I have a second? I'll second, Molly. All right, Molly, thank you. Um, any discussion on the matter? No discussion. Okay, can uh, we have a roll call vote, Deb? Yes, sorry about that. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Okay, all three of you are in. <laughs> right, and then uh, actually you need to give Rob and Marilyn the ability to vote and they just say they abstain. Right. Oh, we sorry about that. Abstain. It's okay. Thank you. All right. Do I have to call out their names? Should I? Should I? I mean, technically, yes, you're supposed to. Okay, Rob. Abstain. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, let's see. Chair uh, Tree Warden report. So, to answer your question about it, Main Street Redesign is not on the agenda, but to answer your question, so what happens now is that. The comments from the Main Street redesign, they were all provided by the different stakeholders, um, which are internal stakeholders, meaning um, our engineering department, um, our um, stormwater manager, the tree warden, the director, um, all the comments. You, so tool design basically presented the 25% design. We are allowed to make comments on the 25% design those uh, comments go to MassDOT. MassDOT looks at all the comments, looks at the 25% design as put together by tool, and then they decide whether or not they're gonna accept the 25% design comments that we've made. And there is a period of what they call negotiation between now and uh, probably April or May, where they actually look at all the comments and they incorporate what comments they accept. And then they will accept the. then they will come back to the city and say, this is what we have drafted. This is here the comments we've accepted. These comments we do not accept. And then there's a negotiation between the stakeholders and mass DOT. Once that negotiation is final and the comments, whatever ones stay, whichever ones go are accepted. Then Mass DOT puts the stamp on the plan and says it's 25% design. So what, what, what the city sent to Mass DOT was a draft. It's not the official 25% design. When the 25% design becomes official, then Mass DOT is required to uh, have uh, public hearings on the, on the design. And you know once the design is final at the 25% level, then it will be that's when we would get to look at it. But all during that time frame between 25% and 75%, um, amenities such as you know, taking this tree and replacing it with this type of tree, that can all happen. The things that probably will not happen are, you know, we are gonna basically, for, I'll use this as an example, the remaining uh, angled parking on Main Street. If Mass DOT says absolutely not, the angled parking has to stay, but the city says we want the angled parking to be moved or gone, then there's a negotiation phase. Whatever comes out of that negotiation phase is what the final plan says. And then basically um, you can't change those types of parts of the design. So is now the time um, that we could advocate as a commission for uh, either fewer or, or no angle parking? Um, you, you are more than, we're, Yes and I mean yes and no. I mean so the thing that I the thing that concerned me about the thing that concerned me about going down that path with the commission in essence is that I'm not a parking professional, so I can't actually tell. I, I don't have the ability and I don't have the access to the data, nor do I have the ability to distill all the data that tells me that you know this amount of parallel parking versus this amount of angle parking um, for traffic purposes is actually better to have one or the other. I understand the fact that there's the, the, the less angled parking, the deeper the public space can be right. uh, for these types of amenities. I totally understand that. But I wanted to make sure we drove our, our, our narrative, our conversation about the tree aspect of it, not the parking part. So you're more than welcome to make comments about the parking aspect of it. But I, I don't know 
The person that's really going to decide whether or not the parallel parking stays in there or leaves is the mayor. That's that's my take on it because you know the mayor did commit in theory when she was running for election that she was going to she supported removing the angled parking on Main Street. Mm. Um, right. I don't know if she said all the angled parking, but she said she supported removing the angled parking. So. So we could individually uh, communicate with her. Yeah, you could. You could individually communicate with her. We could also. We also are, uh, I hope that some of us will attend the 25% design um, public comment. And I don't know if that's gonna be a, a public hearing, I'm sorry, if that's gonna be via electronic platform like this or in person, mm. but they used to have them in person. And MassDOT does take all that information at that point as well. Um, you know, I do, it's kind of, it's I do kind of, feel ahead. strongly that we have, we have a voice for trees and that's our legitimacy and that's our lane and our focus. And if we can, we can amplify that voice, but when we get into parking or some of the other issues that are outside of that, I think it dilutes our mission. And I, oh. I feel like that's our lane is, is trees. But I, the only reason I brought up, I don't know if this is the right time to be talking about this because I don't think it was on the agenda. But no, it's, it's fine. You can talk about it because I don't really have anything else to report. All right. Because, um, I mean, the only reason I bring up parking is because it has a direct impact on how many trees they could put in. So, you know, maybe instead of saying um, we should have no angled parking, we could just say we want to have a design that allows the maximum number of trees to go in. I agree with that. Root I volume. You know, root vo we want to maximize the root volume. Mm, yeah, which, which I think we echo, which we echoed in our the letter that we sent um, was it back in the fall about maximizing all the potential spaces. And, and a lot of my comments that I made um, regarding the 25% design on the placement of trees that were a lot of, you know, I made comments about locations that seem to have holes in the canopy for various reasons. And of course, you know, there's, I haven't had a response. None of us have had a response to our 25% design comments about that, but. Hmm. Uh, Who did those comments go to? The, they went to, uh, they get sent to Tool and then uh, Tool and submits everything to MassDOT uh, from the city. Okay. And then Tool and then the MassDOT reviews the comments looks over the plans and basically decides whether or not they will take the comments into consideration. And if they do, um, then they'll be put on the plan. If they don't, then there's like a, ne a negotiation period between the stakeholder community and MassDOT because MassDOT really, you know, fine tunes everything and they will only fund X, Y, and Z, um, but they're, uh, they're not gonna fund B. So the municipality, for example, the water main, the water main replacement on Main Street, MassDOT is not funding that. That's coming out of um, the user fees. Um, but we need to replace the, the, the water main on Main Street is old, but it doesn't, it's not problematic. But because they're ripping up Main Street, we need to replace it. So that's something that MassDOT is not going to pay for. Um, things of that nature. Yes, Molly. Well, would Mass, um, is it MassDOT that is going to pay for the trees that go in? Technically speaking, federal some federal highway funds of some sort and Chapter 90 funds will pay for whatever project. And then there's going to be a portion of this project that will most likely maybe not be paid by MassDOT, but that's unknown at the moment. When is the public hearing going to be, Rich? I don't know the answer to that, Marilyn, because they haven't even, MassDOT hasn't accepted the official 25% design. I would, think, I would think that it would probably be in the early summer. Early summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think the goal is to get the 75% design done by the end of this fiscal year in order to stay on track for to, uh, to keep this uh, in the tip for 2025, which is the final, you know, the, the year that they would actually, they would put out the construction documents probably six months before then, like in 2024. So that way there it's funded. It's, you know, it's shovel ready. They just have to get the, the funding mechanism has to click and away they go. So construction begins 2025, most likely? I think, I think that is the projected timetable, yeah. Which is not that far away. It's only, you know, two years away, really. 
two and a half. Yeah. So, so is it appropriate or not really to contact the mayor at this point with the same thing that we said in the fall? I, I think it would be, I, you know, that's a good question. I mean, there does, there's no harm in contacting the mayor. There's no harm in sending that, that, you know, looking at that letter again, if you want and send it. I can do that. I, mean, I think we was, should be because we have a new mayor now and um, she may not be aware of what we said before. Okay. That's fine. I can I can dig that up and we can take all we can all take a look at it and review it and then we can send it off if you want. Hi, Jen. Hey, I just have a this is kind of not tree related. I just have a curiosity that is there any for a big project like this, given the kind of decimation of the downtown from COVID, um, is there any like small business supports that are going to be available and that whole downtown's going to be ripped up and a big mess, you know, I, oof, it's scary, you know, right. I'm just wondering right. if there's anything like that. At, at this point, I, I, I can't answer that definitively, but I'm sure that has been part of, I know it's been part of the conversation because of the disruption this is going to cause Yeah. Um, to all, to the businesses. Um, and, you know, they will have to, work with the businesses and I'm sure there'll probably be some kind of liaison between the downtown business association, mm -hmm. uh, city, you know, uh, the mayor's office and, um, the downtown businesses themselves in order to have a process to, um, you know, examine these problems. And if there are problems that exist while the construction's happening, that they actually address it. So it gets corrected, uh, quickly, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge project. Yeah. It has a lot of, the other thing too, is a lot of unknowns in essence, because if you're going to be excavating old sidewalks right up to the front of old buildings and putting an all new a CU soil or some kind of backfill, I mean, there's all kinds of things that, you know, you can't tell until you open, open the ground up. So it'll be, you know, Main Street's, I don't know, I can't even, remember, I can't even tell you when the last time Main Street was excavated for something like this. I mean, yeah. it's really been virtually the same footprint since the 1700s. I mean, I know when, when they were doing major stuff like that at Stick, they redid this one whole building. And there was a couple of times they had to stop because they found stuff. Like yeah. at one point they found like these bones. So they had to analyze the bones. You know, I had to get these archaeologists in there and stuff. Turned out that it was just cows anyway, oh. but because that used to be a stable and stuff. But, you know, they found all kinds of like kind of archaeologically related stuff. You know, they found a really old kiln probably that was from a, a blacksmith shop way over. But anyway, um, you know, that was that, you know, may, brought things to a halt sometimes that they found like historically significant things that they like you just said, they dig it up and they're like, whoa, what's that, you know. <laughs> What so. is the projected amount of time if if things aren't disturbed as Jen's describing? Do they anticipate weeks, months? Probably two years. Ooh. Two whole years. Two two construction seasons, yeah. Wow. Ooh. And I'll give you I'll give you an example of the, the paving uh, project that we the city did this past year that included Warfield Place, Pine Street. Um, the, those projects are, are not finished. They have to actually come back this spring. Mm -hmm. So because of uh, supply and demand issues, because yep. of labor shortages, the contractors' uh, workforce was smaller. Mm -hmm. So they took on, uh, they, you know, they take on a lot of work all over our Western, all over Massachusetts. So they basically hopscotched all over the place. And so, for example, Warfield Place um, has all the sea of soil in it. Uh, the paving is complete, um, the curbing is complete, but the sidewalks are temporary and the driveway aprons were temporary because they just ran out of time. Right. So, you know, that, and same with Pine Street. Pine Street has to have the sidewalks, the temporary sidewalks removed and the uh, new sidewalks put in place, including the ones that have uh, porous pavement. So, you know, Main Street is like a lot of, um, much larger project with a lot more moving parts um, that will require a lot of uh, work, uh, you know, person person power 
Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, hopefully in two years time, we don't have the supply and demand problems that we have and we don't have labor shortages mm -hmm. um, that just exacerbated this year's construction uh, time. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, I, I think just to circle back to kind of cap the conversation off, you know, a couple things. One is that, you know, my, my take on it is that I think there's more locations that we could recreate it to plant trees downtown in this project. Two, um, I think that um, it'll be, it's what's really going to drive what we plant is the amount of uh, soil volume that um, the, the you know, the state or the city is willing to pay for because we're talking about a big lift. We're talking probably, I would say, upwards of a million dollars of uh, structural soil. Yeah. Um, and thirdly, um, tree species availability. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to remember we're, we're kind of fortunate because we, we pull from different nurseries. But typically when you have a construction project of this size, uh, the vendor that is subbed out from the general contractor to the plantings uses specific nursery standard stock that right. is checked in the document, right? Jen, you know this, you've seen this all over the place. We've all seen it. We've all seen construction projects around town uh, and other places where else when we work that you have like two and a half inch caliper stock and it's it's bare root. And I cannot get this, you know, we can't get this specific um, tree species. So we have to substitute. So our goal I think should be to concentrate on making sure that we have more planting spaces as many as possible and be creative um, and think outside the box to make sure we advocate for enough soil volume because we're never going to get this chance again. Right. And three, um, make sure that we um, get, you know, the tree species that we request and we make it an effort to make sure that it, they're uh, sourced and planted properly. Rich, that letter that we submitted um, last year. Yes about what percentage of what we were suggesting uh, has, has made it to tools proposal to the DOT? Probably the, uh, the, main, the biggest piece out of there is increased plantings. I think they added more plantings than the original, than the first original conceptual design they had. Um, but I mean, there's places where they can add plantings that are, that are not really part of the project. For example, at the corner of State Street and Elm Street uh, at St. Saint Mary's uh, Church. That yeah. property right there, there's a prime. Huge, prime, prime place to plant. But the right-of-way layout there is very tight. So the back of the sidewalk, um, if you're walking up the hill, is really the right-of-way. So in order to think outside the box, um, you, you know, the city would have to work with the church. Uh, the Springfield Diocese to, to buy a portion of land or whatever they have to do in order to plant some trees in there um, because I don't think the church would welcome setback plantings, especially if they're trying to sell the property. Um, maybe if a new owner buys it, then we could approach them. I, I you know, places like that. There's another place on the upper end of Main Street by uh, Edwards Church that doesn't have it, it's delineated three lanes of traffic. So it's a right-hand turn State Street, a straight up Elm Street and a left-hand turn on New South. Now it's not really delineated that way. There's also a bus, uh, there's a bus drop off and pick up there. There's no trees in front of uh, Edwards Church. Right. Except for what they have on the side. So that's just a couple of examples of places where I think they can be a little more creative, maybe shrink the roadway a little bit, try to get some trees in there if possible. But they have added trees. And I, I'd, I'd like to review the um, the memo, or the letter we sent. So I'll, I'll dig it up and I'll send it to all of you, and then we can put it on next month's agenda. If you're okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. all right. If I recall, the big conflict is the bike lanes take away a lot of root volume area. Yeah, so I mean, a I mean, lot of political support for the bike lanes. It, it, it is, and you have um, a lot of competing interests, but I mean, people aren't going to come to downtown if it's, if it's sunny and, and 900 degrees. Right. You know, people are going to come to downtown because it's cool and they can actually get off their bike and they can park it right there and they can sit on a bench or they can pull up to a table and chair in front of a restaurant and sit in the shade and get a little respite. Yep. Um, I just think it adds to the vibrancy of the city um, that it would be a shame not to do this correctly. Yeah, especially with you know, the parking garage is right there. 
and you know there's all the electronic signs that tell you how many spaces are left and there's the parking lot that was just resurfaced down by um the round building it seems like there's sufficient parking um not as close but if what was close was for handicapped or special needs then mm -hmm. it, it seems like all the needs could be met for parking biking trees and outdoor uh sitting and my brother lives in Ithaca and he said when they they did a big construction project downtown that's been very successful but um when they first did it they didn't plan enough for the drainage and they had to dig a whole lot of it up again so I like what Rich is saying about doing it right the first time it's really important it's very expensive to try to provide what trees need by the way speaking of plantings on main street it, it's good to see the two trees recently planted in front of the academy of music oh <laughs> after all all these years mm -hmm. yep. right. we, we warmed down. <laughs> we warmed down you've been working on it for years congratulations yeah it's okay we're, we're gonna keep going uh we're gonna keep we're gonna keep planting what kind are they I haven't seen those those are uh, Princeton Elms. Nice. Cool. There's uh, there's two there, and there's two in front of Old School Commons. So, and uh, wow. We, we can talk about this later in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Let's we're, go we're, on we're, agenda. I'm getting off, I'm getting off track. Yeah, so we are. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. Um, I don't have any other info, anything else to report to you. I don't know if anyone has any questions for me or to Warden issues. No. Okay. Um, is there, I'm just curious, uh, this is under your purview, um, Rich, is there going to be an annual Arbor Day or um, Tree City gathering this year or not because of COVID? Uh, what I understand, I, I was in a Mass Tree Wardens meeting today and um, I was on Zoom so I couldn't hear them, but I don't know if there's going to be an in-person uh, celebration. I hope so, but Julie Coop um, was really far in the distance and I couldn't hear her. So I'm going to reach out to her via email and try to figure that out because it would be nice to go and actually uh, meet with. I would have gone to Brookline today myself, but because of our meeting today, I wouldn't have gotten back in time. So I just did it by Zoom, one of the disadvantages as we all know. But yeah, I'll find that out and get, get that out to you all. Um, any other questions before we move on to the next item? Okay, uh, Rotary Club in Service Day, Arbor Day update. So who wants to do this one between Sue, Rob, or myself? Well, Rob might have the most up-to-date information, if I understand okay. correctly. Yeah, so I, I'll just be really brief with just the part that I'm up on, which is that uh, in great part due to David Lukens um, working with the schools, uh, the principals at Ryan Road and Jackson Street School have um, invited uh, us all, Rich, the DPW with the volunteers to plant 20 trees at each school. And we were planning to do that on the 9th as part of the Rotary Club activity. But uh, Jackson Street School is not available on that day for due to a different uh, activity. And so we're, Rich and I are, uh, David are planning to do it on the 16th of April. To Can I tell Barbara that now? Is that official? Uh, that's official. That's what we want to do. Um, I guess you could, so we want, we want to try and um, satisfy the request of the Rotary Club to have some kind of planting on April 9th. So I did check the tree stock today that's available so that we could plant something even without a delivery. And uh, we have trees. Uh, we'll probably plant them in Ward 6 or 7, probably in a residential neighborhood half of them and maybe the other half somewhere else. So I don't know if you, I mean, I think you could send them 
something saying that, that we're doing the main plantings at the schools on the 16th, but that we do intend to have a smaller planting on the 9th and, and that we'll keep them informed of, of uh, how many people will need and where on the 9th. Okay, so the 16th, um, do we need, what approvals are pending for that? May I ask a question about the school plantings? Um, a procedural question. I, I mentioned at a meeting maybe a couple or, or maybe back in December or January that um, when I was when I was at the Jackson Street School to pick up my bib for the hot chocolate run where they had the setup, I noticed that the two trees that we planted there in 2016, it was our Arbor Day activity that year, um, they, they were damaged and Rich went and looked at them and thinks that perhaps it was from, you know, the lawnmower. So it, it was really heartbreaking because I, I mean, those trees have been there now six years almost, mm -hmm. and they seem to be doing well, but the, the, the base of the trunks are just cut up. So my procedural question is, I'm delighted to hear that there's a plan to plant at the trees, but what plan, can, um, what guarantee can the schools make to us that they're gonna protect the trees? Can we, can we put some fencing around them, like a little low fence or something? So um, it's now our standard practice to put those little black um, fencing around the bottom. And that seems to have a very positive effect. I, I did look at those trees with Rich. We went and looked at them and, and Rich, you can correct me, but you, you had felt that frost crack had a lot to do with the demise of those trees. They may well have survived if it weren't for frost cracks. Um, okay, sorry, um, and, I thought maybe they were from the machines. Well, there were there was impact from the machines, but on the other hand also, I've, I've been out to Ryan's school and looked at it and Rich planted some trees there 20, maybe 20 some years ago, 20 years ago. and you know, they, they, have a, they have a lot of trees that Rich has planted that are thriving. So it is possible to have thriving trees. Um, and, I, and we of course planted the four or five ginkgos there a few years ago, and those are all fine. So I, I would say we will lose some of them to kids and machines, and uh, hopefully most of them will thrive, hopefully. I think well, most of it's up to the, the um, lawn maintenance, you know, the maintenance people. And I know uh, there was an effort to talk with, what's his name, Anthony, who does the school lawn mowing. Somebody mentioned that last week. Uh, Tony with, or? With Tony and Rob, Rob met with Tony what, twice this week already, Rob? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I think, and this is what I want to emphasize this about uh, David's effort, which Sue has been part of, I've been part of, um, and just Chris Chamberlain very much part of. Um, who works at Berkshire Design, is that the sort of respect or for trees and the, and the desire to have them in, and maintain them has greatly increased even in the time that I've been here planting trees. So the, they're just more accepted, more valued. Um, I remember Rich one time uh, spoke to his employees and said that trees are part of the infrastructure that we take care of, just like lampposts and, and others structures you, you can't you can't uh, you have to treat them with the same care and and I think that message is is getting out so I'm, I'm I'm feeling pretty positive that people are more accepting I mean it's just a it's a huge thing that we can suddenly go plant 20 trees at a school this is a this is like a change in attitude and uh, and I think that uh, they won't just be looked at as like abandoned orphans though I think they'll be looked at as a valuable part of their infrastructure uh, that didn't just get put there by, by random couple of people who came in and dropped a couple of trees. And so Marilyn, I do think that those um, linden trees that you're referring to, you know, did come from an earlier era and they weren't really probably that well treated. Uh, one other quick question, Rob and Sue, regarding involvement with the schools. Um, earlier this year, I mailed all the elementary schools for Arbor Day, the postcard and the calendar. 
Um, and I'm just wondering if any of if any of the schools that you reached out to, if, if anybody mentioned that they were going to be participating in the poster contest. David no, might. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sue. David might know more because he's part of a small group that are trying to meet with curriculum coordinators to push for getting trees in the school curriculum more. Mm -hmm. um, so David, if you wanna call David or ask him, if that's an interest of yours, by all means, check in with him, remind him that that was something and maybe they can, you know, as they start to have those conversations about the curriculum and where trees are fitting into it, that would be a perfect, part to bring up and remind. It's been a while since the schools have participated. There's a, also a whole uh, organization, nonprofit called Massachusetts Agriculture in the Classroom. And all that would fit, it, you know, they have pre-made curriculums and, you know, they put on a conference and everything. So I don't know if David knows about that, but that may no. be that may be, you know, if you're moving in that direction and interested think, in that, it might be just a resource to look into. And it may be like more acceptable to teachers if they don't have to invent all this stuff, you know, that, oh, here, you know. Well, well I just wanted to go back to the answer about, someone asked a question about the schools and where are we with the approval? So what's been approved are, are, are the site locations and the numbers of trees. And what has not been approved, but it has pretty much been gone over is um, the species selection. So, so essentially we have not handed into Tony a complete species selection. We've discussed it with him. He knows about what we're doing. And those species selections will also go to the, the principals. And they, so nobody's seen the species selection, partly because I've only worked with Rich to do one school species selection. And, Tomorrow I'll do the other school. Today we did one. Tomorrow I'll do the other. And then, and then, so so the the, the twenty trees are approved and the locations are approved. And so we've okay. gone. Okay. Yeah. So we need to have the. We're thinking about doing both schools on the sixteenth, in which case we need to get final approval from the principals at each of the school for that date. So we need That's date right. approval, and then I realize there's also something that has to go to the school committee regarding transfers of assets from DPW to the to the school department, which is I think Chris and, and David are working on that. And it has to come from Rich. They're just going to get the form. There's a form, Rich, that, that we think we're going to get and give to you. But they don't have to vote on it. They just have to somebody has to sign it. Yeah. So there are a few steps, but you know, the fact that Tony, who's in charge of grounds and and the principals have all agreed and, and Rich is aware of all the sites and I am too. So all the people who might have something to say about the sites have, have all approved. So. Thank you, Rob, for it, what you've done represents a lot of time, effort and thought and finesse with working with Tony because he's responsible for all the school grounds and he has to deal with the trees going forward. Yeah. And having a productive cool. relationship with him is panning out in that we're be able to move forward. I know yeah. you've worked with him over the years, so thank you. And especially Chris Chamberlain. He, ah. you know, he is an engineer, he works for Berkshire Design. And so um, when he comes to the meetings, Tony loves it because you know he's oh, okay. a featured guy. And I just want to say, I mean, I am feeling r rather like, uh, like we've really done well because Tony already anticipates that we're going to show up at JFK and um, one other yes. oh, Le Leeds. So it's so he, he's expecting to see us at Leeds and JFK and then a little bit at the high school. So in other words, it's, Great. it's ongoing. Super. You know. I, this this is huge. I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah. From being on this committee for a long time. It, yeah. I'm telling you, we. Uh, Rob, you know, kudos to you and the group of people that's working on because we have tried and tried and tried. We'll get one. 
one tree. You know, uh, tree here. It, yeah. it was like moving, you know, a battleship around, you know. It was, this, it was is, really, this is enormous, enormous success. That's great. It's really funny yeah. what you say, to leading, adding to what you said, Jen, is that David went with me today and the, the, the principal's like, let's have as many trees as we can. And Tony says, yeah, plant 20 trees. And, and, and David goes to me, he says, that was so easy. And I, I said, well, David, yes, it was very easy, but but if you'd gone a few years ago, you wouldn't wow. know. You've gotten two trees, you know. I think Rob, there are can, can you speak to um, like who who's going to take care of those trees? I'm just curious because you mentioned leads, and I, and I remember that that same Earth Day in 2016 when we planted trees at Leeds. I think they they didn't last long. It was right outside their front door. Um, what's the plan for taking care of these trees once they're planted? Well, Rich has volunteered already to water the trees at Jackson Street School. No, it, 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 Ryan Road, I'm sorry. Wherever we need to water them, that's yeah. be on he, our list. Volunteered to put them on the water list. And um, the parents at Jackson Street School are very active and will um, look after the trees in terms of uh, tree care. At Ryan Road, it's a little less clear whether Tree Northampton is gonna have to step in and do tree care or, or whether there are parents there that would do it. I, I don't know. Um, Thank you, Rich. I mean, all these, it takes a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. And I think it doesn't hurt that the Rotary went to the mayor. And well, that's what's so wonderful is that I think that it represents a change of, of it's sort of like, if, if I think of myself as bottom up, there's bottom up and top down. Now. Yep, both yeah. ways. Yeah. But thanks, Rich, so much. I haven't really done a whole heck of a lot, to be honest with you. I've just kind of taken a back seat on this one, and I'm okay with it because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to uh, shepherd along a good plan, but I can't take credit other than I'm going to show up and plant and I'll provide you with the trees. <laughs> you know, Rob, Rob, David, Chris. David. Uh, has really, Barbara. yeah, they, and Barbara has really taken up the mantle. And this kind of all just, uh, we seem to work all really well under pressure on this commission. We work, <laughs> unfortunately, we're, you may lament that we, we have to, you know, look at an ordinance after a public hearing, or we have to deal with a suggested planting project that's like two days away, but we seem to somehow always have managed to pull it together. So I think it's just a collaborative nature of who we all are as people and, the same kind of focus mission we all have for the city's canopy. So I'm, 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 ha I'm happy. I'm just, I'm just amazed uh, because you're right. I've worked in the city for 33 years, and um, you know, only thing we went to the schools to do for tree work was to cut them down. They never ever wanted to plant any. And it was, Amazing. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. And I, and Rob is, Rob is correct. Uh, there is just a cultural shift um, of how people are viewing the importance of trees and. Um, integrating them with, with open space, uh, you know, because open space requires a lot of maintenance. Uh, it, you know, there's a lot of carbon, there's a lot of carbon um, greenhouse gases that are, um, you know, that are sent into the atmosphere for managing large spaces, recreation spaces that really don't have any use. So Jackson Street is a good example of a place that has a lot of open space that doesn't have any organized sports any longer on it. So why not actually plant trees? It actually changed the dynamics of the, uh, of, of the, uh, you know, the, the school's, um, the school ground. So I'm just happy that it's all coming together and we'll make it happen. We'll get the trees. Um, and definitely I agree with Rob. We have enough uh, places to plant uh, on the ninth so we can actually get, because the Rotarians have the ninth as their in-service day for, um, I think, New England um, in conjunction with uh, Connecticut Rotarians. So they want to have a, 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 photo, a photo op and, time to just say that, you know, we did do something on our in-service day, and then they'll come back on the 16th, and also we'll supplement that with folks from Tree Northampton and whoever else, maybe some of the school parents will want to volunteer. So it's all coming together. Oh, I have one little detail, Sue, that you need to keep track of here, is that I keep saying 20 trees. On, this August, on April 16th, we're only planting 15 trees per school. The other five trees, will be planted at a later date at each school. Okay. Because uh, after this, I'm going to follow up with Barbara. Yep. Uh, what she really wants is she wants to be able to put out a press release with the dates. So I'm also going to be contacting 
David and say, we've got to get the principles to put it in writing. Cause we had it in writing from Lauren from Jackson street. And then she forgot that she had something else going on on the ninth. So that right. kind of threw everything into a. Yeah, you're right. Okay. We can't say it's the 16th until we have it confirmed. And That's David, I mean, you can't do a press release until David no. gets those. Yeah. Like in writing and definitely we don't have any other events going on and you yeah. can do it on the 16th. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So that might already be in the works. I hope so. I hope so. One other quick thing I just wanted to mention that um, uh, Marilyn made me remember this is, you know, when we initially planted some of those trees at the at the schools back on Arbor Day, that was a shipment of bare root trees that were not in good shape. And I think we had to hold them for a certain amount of time, but it wasn't the the stock wasn't great. And also we just we just had we figured a bunch of stuff out uh in between then and now so i think some of the death of those trees weren't necessarily because of lack of maintenance but because the stock when we put them in the ground was not as good as it could have been and when you're dealing with bare root plants you gotta stock is everything you know yes, we what, never all, ordered, you got, all you got is roots you know <laughs> so we never ordered from schichtel again after exactly that. exactly yeah exactly it was very, it was very hot because yes. When the delivery happened, it was in the 80s. Yep. So we took them out of the truck. They were in the back of a tractor trailer. We were the last stop. So they yeah. did it in the longest. There were plastic bags that had holes in them. There was no water in there. Yeah. And we had to take them out of the plastic bags and we had to bury them in mulch. Right. Because it was 80 degrees. And then we put the following two days later, when we planted on Arbor Day, it was almost 90. Because uh, we planted, and I don't remember how hot it was. We were at Bridge Street School and at Jackson Street, so and Ryan Road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we've learned a lot since then. So. Right. <laughs> Onward and upward. Right. Uh, anyone else? Oh, so Arbor, I just we are we are running late. Obviously, let's uh, get that STO done once and for all. Well, so before we go on to the STO, I would like to say something about that. I I do not want. I personally don't want to take a final vote on this without David being. Oh, and the reason that is, is because David put a tremendous amount of effort into this document, along with the rest of you. I'm more than happy to discuss our content changes. But what I'd like to do is once we I want to take the content changes that are in the, um, the draft that we got that uh, everyone's kind of looked at already and put it in a single document that's clean. So everybody so it doesn't look like it's so cut up. Yes, I will have that. Prepped. I didn't have time to do it today. I was hoping to get it done today, but I'll have that prep for our, our first meeting in April. But well, we can talk about STO stuff in a second. I just want to say Arbor Day update. Sue, I sent you an email um, with the seedlings, the uh, species. I sent it to you earlier today, okay? I was working and I didn't get a chance to That's look at it. it. It's, it's in, you have it. Um, so we are going to be planning on doing the Arbor Day whip giveaway like we normally do. We're also going to do some tree plantings um, on Arbor Day week, but it won't be as intensive as it was last year because we will have already done the intensive fertile at, on the 9th and on the 16th. So we'll do traditional tree plantings. We just don't have actual, Rob and I talked about it today, about the locations. We have to finalize them and then we'll come back to you at the beginning of April with um, the locations for the Arbor Day plantings, and then I'll make sure we get a proclamation uh, from and, the mayor's office. And the giveaways are the 29th and 30th. Yes. Okay. Yes. Delivery the on the 25th, Jen. Okay. Okay. And um, I forget what we've done for supplies. I remember. Did we use your compost pile? Yep. Yeah. So I, what we did is depending upon where you. So you prepped everything we brought the materials to you so wherever that is we'll bring whatever you need if, if i recall somebody kind of stepped in and said oh they're going to get their students or something to oh back. me yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you i don't yeah. forget you <laughs> no, no, i can i can i'm planning on it i'm planning on it yeah yeah i'm counting on it so i can a couple things can happen uh whoever we don't have to discuss it at this meeting right now but you know we have a dump truck so i could come up and get compost if um that's needed in you know, whatever we can talk about that 
we don't have to we, we ran out of bags or we I got a lot of extra bags I've been okay. saving them yeah I've been saving. newspaper bags because some of the roots were longer than yep. the bags they sent yeah we've been out of twisty ties if I recall oh okay that I don't know about that I don't know about I that have, I have I have all the bags and the twist ties okay 600 bags 600 twist ties and I can get extras if you need them and I'll read the, the list. Douglas fir, Lincoln, white oak, American sweet gum, bald cypress, service berry, and red mulberry. Excellent. Cool. Beautiful selection. So who do, where do they come? Like who, do they come to you, Rich? Or yeah, like they, they come to the cemetery here. And then when I get them, I, in the years past, I brought them to Rob's house. Okay. Um, you know, because so, the last two years, we haven't done any, we haven't done it here with the volunteers have, the last three years volunteers have done it which is great so we can just you and i can just coordinate with sure. what yeah and i can come Absolutely. pick them up or you can drop it at my house or whatever and i can just yeah. bring them to school if like the yeah. compost thing we can figure that out you know okay. if you have somebody you want to dump a pile of compost we can do that you yeah. know we'll yeah. figure that out All i right. took the friday off and i have a truck if i can help take help you jen like if you need okay. another Get truck yeah, and Sue, you're gonna you're gonna manage, or Vicky will manage the volunteer schedule for the whip giveaway in front of City Hall. I believe so. She did it last year. I'll talk to her about that. All right. And we'll just have to get a little list together of the things that you're gonna need down in front of City Hall so we can get them to. So I would imagine I'll be planting somewhere for you know for a few hours that day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so on to the STO. So um, you have an email that was sent to you this afternoon with the uh, attached PDF that has all the comments on it for changes. You also have an email with the text in it that um, was highlighted from Sue. These are from Sue's notes of what she took at the meeting. My goal was to try to put all of this in a Word document um, so it actually uh, is something that we can review as you know with the, as a on a piece of paper instead of me doing a Zoom um, or I can you know share screen. We didn't get that far. And then the other thing is, is that because David is not here, I want I wanted David to have a chance to weigh in on the final draft before we voted on it. And I, I did speak to him about that because he he was very apologetic. He couldn't be here because he knew this would be on the agenda. So if all of you are okay with this. I would like to table this until the next meeting, unless you want to have a discussion about some of the particulars that are on there presently. I don't hear anyone. Why don't, why don't we agree to read this and then come to the next meeting prepared to uh, put a bow on it? Okay. And in the interim, I will take the document and I will make it into a complete Word document and make, clean it up. And then if we have to make changes at that meeting, we can make changes at that meeting and then vote to vote on the changes. And then the document will just, you know, I, I can make the changes or Deb can make the changes or something of that nature. Okay. All right. Thank you. David, David uh, is appreciative of that. Okay. Uh, our next item of business is 530. And wow, I'm around time. That's very strange. Okay. So I want to do a screen share. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the 2021 planting update. So um, I finished the spreadsheet that we have uh, been waiting for for like two years. So my apologies, I'm a little slow, but I'm pretty good when it's done. So let me do a screen share. Hold on one second. Got to find the screen I want to share first. All right, inbox. Okay, go back to the team meeting. Screen share. Copy of a thing. All right. Can everybody see this list? Yeah. Dionis West, can, can, you, can, you, can you see it? I mean, I for me, it's really small because it's that 50% because it's a Google Sheet. Yep. But, 
Okay. So this is the original sheet that we all, and I've, I've been on oh, yeah. this, this is the original sheet that we all worked on from the very beginning. Um, that was, uh, this is like a template of that sheet that was uh, made, I think, by Lily or maybe Marilyn, I can't remember. Um, but this, there's, this sheet now lives. Um, I'm going to go back for a second here. Okay, here's our shared drive. Everybody has access to this shared drive right here, right? Mm -hmm. G-Suite user. Um, open that up. It's up here in the active tree planting and watering list, okay? Mm. You open this up, and this is it. And this is a copy of the this is a copy of a list that I have. I have the list in my own private drive, uh, okay. my Sheet drive, that is the original. So you just double click on this and open it up in Google Sheets, and then you'll have access to it. And this basically has the warehouse for all the data for tree plantings and their locations from 2015 to present. Um, and uh, I didn't alter any of these things. The, five-year plan, the priority zones, which you can all look at and go over. You know, these are some of the original priority zones that we came up with back in the day when we were trying to determine our five-year planting plan and where we should plant. Um, again, I haven't changed any of that. Um, we also had a community nodes tab. Um, and I, I, funny enough, right, on the top of this tab, right, what's up there? All these schools, right, and what we're talking about. So here we are, five years later, we're doing okay. Um, the EJ uh, list, this was, um, this was our EJ street list. This was the item in column A was the items that we had talked about, um, about just, this was to try to get the grant put together and put dollars and cents to it. I didn't want to do anything with this because I think it's important to uh, memorialize these streets because, you know, we committed to doing the EJ plantings, even though the grant we got, um, that were awarded, we just used for general street plantings instead because we weren't able to finish it because of uh, the pandemic. So we should keep this and make sure that we honor that and get these streets. You know, we should probably actually go back at some point and look at these locations and find planting locations, or we can use mm -hmm. um, the planting sheets that um, that Molly initiated to actually identify places on. Yeah. Street those zone. most of those places I think are within those quarter mile radiuses radii. Okay. And we've planted yeah. a lot of them. Fruit Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah we Brown did. But, so this is why it's good to correlate the huh? data that we collected recently and the data that's in the other end of the sheet that shows you where we've planted. Uh, the skateboard park. I've never well, even been there. Hardly. That's interesting. Yeah, Vets Field. I mean, Vets Field's a, a place that, you know, they don't even use the baseball field that's there. And personally speaking, I think we should just make it into a, a forest. But All right. I think, Arboretum. Park, I think the Park and Rec Commission might have a problem with that, but we'll see. <laughs> one, one step at a time. We got the schools. We get just one thing at a time. Um, <laughs> this next tab is just, this is just a, <laughs> it's empty because um, it's like a catch-all for things that are found on a ward list, but we can't match them to an actual planting site. So that's just blank. Um, the ginkgo list. So this was something that I developed um, with Rob because we have, these are all the ginkgo trees we've planted since from uh, 2015 to present. So I don't know if you can see that, but the reason we have this list separated from all the other lists is because we fertilize these trees oh. uh, with tree spikes because they have seem to have a hard time um, getting their, their, as I would say, their sea legs. Oh, but, Rich, may I ask a question about the uh, ginkgo? Sure. Well, it was somebody on this commission, maybe Sue, who last year around this time um, gave us all a heads up that Doug Ptolemy was giving a presentation uh, through, a, through a library here in Massachusetts. And I attended that webinar, which was really eye-opening. And just last month, I arranged for Doug to basically give the same talk as one, one of Kestrel Land Trust's events, um, a webinar. And the point of me bringing this up is um, because his whole point is that 
trees co-evolved with caterpillars, um, which then attract birds and just build an ecological community. He said he, he really discouraged planting ginkgo trees because um, even though they don't necessarily cause harm uh, as other, you know, as invasive species might do, they don't attract any caterpillars. Um, and so on, on some level, they're, they're not functioning ecologically like other mm. uh, more native trees. Yeah, that, that's well noted. I actually um, attended that uh, webinar last year that he gave from uh, a, a, a library in the eastern part of the state. So um, when I move down the list a little bit, I'll show you, you can actually see how many we planted versus for example, how many like oaks we planted. So, but this is just to keep, uh, this is just to keep track of what we planted so we can fertilize them. Um, and I believe there's 146 of them. Sorry about the headache. Yes, 146. So you, you don't have any capacity to do any other type of fertilization, like uh, tree injection. I mean, like um, soil injection. You don't have that kind of setup. No, but I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm going to be meeting with um, Craig Beck at Bartlett Tree to actually talk about a um, a five, like a five year uh, maintenance plan for fertilization of mm -hmm. tree trees, sort of like what he did over on Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have, uh, we have, we use them uh, and other vendors to do um, plant health care. Yeah. So it would be a, like a standalone, could be a standalone contract or it could be a yearly invoice uh, as long as it doesn't exceed the contract amount. Um, but I think that's part of the key to maintaining these trees and their vitality over time. So, um, because we, we do not have the capability, we're using uh, tree spikes or um, just uh you know, drilling a hole in the soil and filling it with uh, fertilizer. So um, I want to respond to to Marilyn a little bit for my understanding, and I'm certainly not an expert, but my understanding is um, trees like London Plain, which have, are, 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 are similar in a way that if you look up the eco benefits, you're not going to find a lot of eco benefits, but that they serve, they have other benefits as well, one being that you have a variety of families in case, if, if that, you know, I understand what Doug Tallamy is saying about the pollinators and the, and everything and the caterpillars mm -hmm. and the birds, but, um, and also he comes from, I forget what his background is, but this is kind of like outside of his field in a way. Um, but well, actually, he's an entomologist, so he specializes in insects. And what I find fascinating, I've never heard a talk quite like it, is he really makes the connection between, you know, our the ecological systems all co-evolved. So the, yeah. the insects oh, yeah. and the trees. Yeah. And, and just because birds actually eat caterpillars more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. You, you want to plant oh, yeah. trees that native trees that draw the native caterpillars. Yeah, I, I think diversity is great, but I, I'm also is just making a plug for ecological functionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we've looked a lot at that at, on our tree lists about, like if you look at the tree planting guide, there's actually eco benefits section, like there's columns. I don't know how much time you've spent with that, but um, I'm always looking in there to see like, oh, what are the eco benefits for the different trees? and some of them have a lot like oak and some of them don't have as many, but um, thank you, Marilyn, for bringing that up. Yeah. All right. So just, I, I'm sorry, I'm taking a little longer than I wanted, but it's important because all of you have access to this data. So I want you just to see where it all is and, and mm -hmm. know that you can, you can alter this data. So just be mindful of that. You all have editing rights because this document lives in the drive, which all of us have um, access to. So this is just an example. This is 2015. So what I did is I broke it down by year. This helps us actually uh, water the trees easier because the Brooke and Abby who do the watering can actually take their tablet out and they can look at all these tabs much easier than me handing them a paper that has 5,000 trees on there. So in 2015 up here, 
we planted 96 trees. Uh, 2016, we planted 128. And the way that we have set this up is that it says total by species, by street, by lot location, by planting type, by ward, planting projects uh, down the line. I'll show you what that is. Um, 2017, we planted 244. Okay, 2018, we planted 266. Uh, 2019, <laughs> this is our trophy year, we planted 421. Mm -hmm. So, and, wow. and all this data, all this data is encapsulated in one tab. I'll get to that in two seconds. Mm. Uh, 2020, um, we planted 223. And that's pretty good considering that we were shut down for half of the year. Mm. Uh, let's see. This one here, this, this is a master tab. This is locked. Okay, you, no one can edit this. So I have a different tab that you guys can, can destroy if you need to, but not this one because this is where all the data lives and uh, will stay in there. So this is, this is the master list of all the years combined. Mm. Trees planted 2015, 2021. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we've planted 1,697 mm. trees. And the way that this is set up is set by total by scientific name. So that's how it, that's the scientific names of the trees as I entered them. But we broke it down uh, a little further. So we make sure that we are, we understand our 10, 20, 30 rule. So total by family is in this column. Total by genus is in this column, okay? Total by tree species is in this column. Wow. And then it goes total by street. Wow. And then it goes total by lot location. And what I mean by lot location yeah. is mm. planted. I also added this week uh, down here in 159, this is ones that have actual physical paper setback agreements hmm. that are going to, that are going to be filed at the registry of deeds and not all file. I have to file the rest of them. What are the other setbacks? Those were ones that we don't have agreements with. That were earlier ones, the earlier ones that were planted prior to us. Um, oh, having the uh, ruling from Alan Seawald about if we wanted to make it a setback tree, we had to have the agreement to go with it. So, so the earlier agreement expired in two years. And so right. some of the trees have expired agreements and we don't track them anymore. We don't. So those trees are outside of the right of way, but it's up to the landowner to take care of them? Correct. Correct. And they're actually the agreements that we made with them, according to Alan Seawall, were not even legal to begin with because we can't, we can't, change, we can't change the rules of MGL 87. MGL 87 says the tree will be considered a public shade tree. Doesn't say in two years it's not a shade tree. Doesn't say in four years, ten years. It says it will be considered a public shade tree if there is agreement made between the tree warden and the property owner. Anyways, uh, this is by planting type, so it shows you the majority of our trees are grow back, 1260, 302 bare root, 119 B and B, and 16 container trees, which we used to plant container trees in the very our very first year. We had quite a few of them. This is the uh, very interesting piece. This is total by ward. So as you can see, um, you know, there's a little bit of a disparity uh, between in, in ward three, but that's where we started planting actually from the very beginning. So we are playing catch up. We, the two wards that need the most attention, in my opinion, are ward six and ward seven. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, ward, ward six in, in particular. Have we done any um, plantings out in Leeds? Uh, we have. So Ward 7 is Leeds. So we have yeah. done plantings in, in Leeds. We've done more than Ward 6. But um, this is why uh, for the Arbor Day, for the April 9th planting, we're talking about going into Ward 6 and planting some streets where we didn't, uh, where we left off, we didn't finish. Um, and it's also a good thing to do that in Ward 6, I think, as well, because Consular Barge is involved with the road Rotarians. Yep. So if yeah. we get into her ward, we, you know, we can utilize her, um, her, her sway with her constituents when we want to plant trees in other places in Ward 6 as well. And so the last tab um, is planting project. 
So um, don't really pay attention to the Arbor Week plantings, but that's really my best guess of how many trees we planted from the records I could find uh, during the week of uh, Arbor Day. Because we start, instead of making Arbor Day plantings, we're now doing Arbor Day Week, which is a little different. Um, neighborhood, this is neighborhood tree plantings. We planted 129 trees related to neighborhood tree planting programs that have hmm. been at residents' request. South Street was our project for underwire trees and other trees on the other side. And another project we did was uh, CDH. So next year, what we'll have is, or this year, I'll put a tab in here for schools. So we can oh. kind of keep track of where we planted um, by projects. It's a lot to digest here, but this is all on the drive. You can all look at it. Please feel free to do whatever you need to do. You can change this temp, you can change this particular document. I prefer that you don't change it, but if you need to, you know, for sorting purposes, so you can see like how many ginkgos were planted versus how many oaks, um, which I will say that there have been, uh, we have planted right here, 124 quercus. Uh, and we have planted in the ginkgo family, 146. So, you know, we, we, we planted a lot of trees. Uh, 171 linden trees. Yeah, 171 linden. Yeah. So, so you can digest all this information. So that, that document can be sorted, you know, for us to look at it in different ways? Yes. You can play with it. Yeah. Yep. yep. If you blow I guess, it up. Though what you're saying, Rich, is when we sort to look at it as an individual, yes. we're, the, we're sorting the view that everyone's going to see. So it's kind of can, maybe good. So, Remember so what, you, what you can do is you can make a copy of this document and store it somewhere where you can mess with it. Oh, that's a good but idea. So, yeah, you just want to make a copy and then rename it. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then it's yeah, it, but, because it is, I've had a lot of like mess ups in, in uh, mm. Google. So <laughs> it's harder than Excel. So I would just, I just want to show you one thing about sorting it. When you, you need to highlight these fields like this. Yeah. Sorry, let me, my mouse is messed up. But, but not the stuff that's green on the right. That is correct. So right. in, in order to sort it all, yep. not to play, you stop on the notes. Yes. And then depending upon, you go to your data, you go to sort range, advanced yep. sorting range options, or uh, advanced range, range sorting options, excuse me. And then depending mm -hmm. upon what column you want to see first. So if you want yep. to do it by a year, you would, from A to Z, you would sort, um, it's column put, uh, K. Put data has header row. I'm sorry, what? Do you want to put data has header row up, up a Click bit? The box. Click that do, box. You, you can do it that way. Um, I'm just okay. lazy. I don't like to type, so I don't do that. I just do it by what I need. So, oh, yeah, okay. but, but you can do it any way you want. It's fine. But, but we're not doing it on the actual uh, no, when it's online. We're we're actually moving it somewhere else and doing it. Yeah, make a copy of it, or you can you also can make a copy to this template and just name it under your name. Ah, if you're working on it. So basically, what you do is you go down here, and you would say you know um, copy to mm. you just say existing spreadsheet, and then it, it you know makes you go to the existing spreadsheet, and then you have to make a name for it, and you just put you know Molly's document, so you can actually mess around with it. Um, you, can't, you can't mess around with this side of this document because this whole thing, there's a whole formula system in here that talks to this document. You can change this all around, but you can't change, can't change this because yeah. of the formulas. You see it has a uh -huh. count ifs and this yeah. has a count of, and that's how it determines where everything is in the columns. Wow. The other thing you can do too is um, all these have uh, data. This, these all have data validation. Okay, so each one of these tabs has a drop-down box. Mm -hmm. So for entering data, it's a lot easier. So this has all the oh, same. Oh yeah! Trees. Wow. Okay. This oh, has so um, sophisticated. All the families. Um, this has the common names. I don't have anything because the common names are not always the same as the scientific names. I mean, the amazing thing here, though, too, is that, you know, whoever comes 
years after us in 10 years or 15 years like you're you know there's so much information here and it's actually a data set that if you know 10 years from now some student from UMass wanted to compare x y or z you know it, it's this is amazing it's it just is. amazing rich so one other thing I want to show you is I'm going to give you a headache so just hold on <laughs> so at the bottom here what I tried to do, these are trees um, that died. Ah, I was wondering about that. Okay, so if you scroll, and I, because these fields all have data validation and they all add up in those green columns, I didn't fill out any of these other fields. This field, this D field, which is um, the common name, doesn't have data validation, so you can't mess anything up. So if you move the document over, you'll see that the trees were originally planted in 2018. I kept their years, so we understood when they were planted. And then if you scroll over in the notes, okay, it'll tell you that uh, 200, so to tell you the address of the tree. So this is a London plane tree that we moved, moved to Industrial Drive, and it says uh, up here in 2021. So it will tell you, for example, um, we replaced this. Uh, this is a ginkgo we replaced on North Maple Street that was planted in 2018. It was replaced in 2021. It's a way just for us to keep track of what we planted that died. Mm -hmm. So not counting the uh, London plane trees, because actually we were paid for them by Mass Dot to dig them up and take them away. Right. How many but, trees died? Yeah. Uh, well, you go from uh, 1690. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I'd have to sort it in such a way. But this is the only way that I could capture what we lost and we replaced. Are those um, the trees in orange that died? Are they also listed above or they only are. listed below? They, no, they're the new ones. The replacement trees are listed above. But the ones that died are not listed above. That is correct, and the reason they're not counted is because they're in this one field right here that has no drop down boxes. Sorry, oh. I'm not looking at the screen. You can't see me, but there's no drop down box. So that's the only way to do it. Um, so if we're if we're sorting that data by column, do we have to also not include those rows in orange? No, you, you're you're in order to sort it, it it'll sort this. It, it'll it'll force these to go back. So if you sort by year, the only mm -hmm. way it's going to do it is if you sort by common name or if you sort by year. So if you decide oh. you want to sell the trees planted in 2017, these two, uh, these three orange lines right here, where it says two, uh, these mm -hmm. three orange rows yep. will come up in the 2017. Okay. But that allows you to, the knowledge that, oh yeah, look, we planted Tilia, mm. Horn Beam, and Adonis Wyman Crab in 2017 on South Street and they died. Well, I see. What, what did we do with them? Well, we replaced uh, them and we replaced them in these years. Uh, they are okay. in the white part above here as trees that exist today. Uh huh. Great. Okay. And there's so many factors like the stock, where they came from, the type of stock, the conditions, the climate that year, planted, the the climate that year. There's so yeah. many different things. So I can tell just looking at that, all those London plane trees that died. They were very bad stock. And and so there was the Schichtel ship that was bad stock. And then there were the London plane trees mm. that weren't good. And then there's a bunch of other random ones. Um, and, and Rich, some of them have been run over and stuff like that. You, you put them as dead, right? Yeah, so I there's two that have been run over that I have to go back and recently that I have to uh, take out of here. But I'll, I'll do that um, probably tomorrow because I didn't get to it. But I wanted this to be done. I wow, a, great job. I, it's amazing. I, I it it is. Of, um, you should be happy. so proud, Rich. This is a legacy you're leaving. Oh, this is, I mean, it's huge. This is, this is just the, the legacy is not the document. The legacy is all of our work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Thank so, you, Rich. Cool. Yeah. Bravo. This is for your disposal. Um, but I will, uh, and then what we're going to do is we have a tab already set for this year. This is for 2022. Great. So this will be, be the template that we're going to continue to use. And as we think of things that we want to add, we can add columns and you can actually add data, data validation, and then you can actually 
add a column to whatever you want. You know? um, for example, I added you know pruning. So Rob's gonna go through here and, and put all the pruning dates so we know that they had a young tree train, et cetera, things of that nature. This is not in lieu of the tree keeper, um, but this actually, I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna be able to probably do another tree inventory that's gonna capture all these trees. So I'm not really worried about shoving this into tree keeper at the moment, unless, because I'd like to actually at another commission meeting talk about writing away for a grant to do another inventory, but that can come at another time um, in the next month or two. So, okay. All right, we are at six o'clock. I am sorry, I overstated my welcome. Um, <laughs> does, uh, and Molly, I know we had, does anyone have any questions about this? And if you do, you, if you don't think of any now, just send me an email. Um, and if you mess something up, don't worry about it. I can fix it, I think. That, that's a stretch. This is a guy who almost flunked computer class. And, uh, <laughs> I don't just make know, a I copy. Don't... That's the biggest message. Make a copy. Make, make, make yeah, a copy, copy for yourself. Right. And then just, just make just make a copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do you tell David? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so at six o'clock, I don't Molly, do you want to just table the spotter lantern fly till next? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. um, any other business anticipated, not anticipated by the chair? Marilyn. Oh, <clears throat> well, I, I emailed Rich on Monday um, to let him know that um, my, my term is coming to an end. I, I've served three terms on the commission. Mm -hmm. um, the first year in 2015, we all had staggered terms so that we didn't all term out at the same time. So I served a one year term in 2015 to 2016 and I have now served almost two more terms. So my term is ending this year. I'm, I'm looking at my plaque on the wall. I, I know, well, I'm, I'm basically um, letting you all know that when my term ends, I'm, I'm gonna step off the commission. Um, I feel like it's a good time to to do that, having served three terms for seven years. And um, I know that there have been others who have expressed interest in serving, including Christina Peterson, who I think would be great. Um, you know, the past couple of years have been challenging for everybody. It's, I, I, don't, I really don't feel like I've contributed as much the past couple of years as I did my first five years. And so, um, that, that's part of the reason, but I also just feel like my term's ending and I just feel like it's time um, to move, move on. So I know not everybody is here and not all the original members are here, but it's, it's really been a pleasure. I moved here in 2015, just when the commission started and it was a great way to just jump into my new community and do something directly related to my degree in conservation biology. Um, I, I've always loved community service. My parents instilled that into us at, from an early age. So wherever I live, I try to do at least one thing as a volunteer. Um, but I, I, I wanna give other volunteers the opportunity. And it's just been amazing, as I know Jen and Rob can attest to, who, who are also um, from that t original group, just how this commission yeah. has grown. Mm. Um, so it's it's not always it's always a difficult choice when you leave something. So it's with mixed feelings, but I, I know that we're in great hands with Rich and all of you and any others who will, will come along. How how when exactly in this year does your term expire? Well I've got to double check the first tree commission meeting was May 6, 2015. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if my term ends at the end of April um, or th there mm -hmm. was some delay when we were sworn in and re-sworn in. It's June, Maryland. What's that? It's June. 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 The end of June, beginning, do you know? It's the end of June. I have to, I have to uh, send an email to court in the mayor's office because we'll, I want to forward them your email. Uh, and uh, actually I cc them in your email, but then I have to follow up with another email to court to uh, um, get the mayor's, uh, on the mayor's agenda to, uh, however, I'm not sure how she wants to communicate vacant commission uh, positions 
So I have to commute, we have to figure that out first. <coughs> In the interim, I, I thought about reaching out to Christina and just letting her know there, there will be a vacancy because she, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. It would be a, a, a great uh, addition. Um, but I'd also have to say that I, I'm going to miss working with you, Marilyn. Uh, and I guess you're right. The last two years have been very challenging. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, you know, irregardless of how challenging they have been, we have found a way to be creative and continue to move forward. Um, and, you know, we have a voice in this community that is uh, different than a lot of other voices of uh, commissions. And we meet, we meet more than any other commission. We're the only other commission we meet twice a month. No one else does that. The city council meets twice a month and they're a legislative body. So that's another thing to be super proud of. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's hard. It's like retirement parties. I can't go to retirement parties from people that I've worked with here for many years because it's a reflection of my own, my own demise, not demise, I would say, <laughs> my own end, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, geez, am I gonna go to that person's retirement party? And I'm like, no, no, I can't do it. So. Um, well, maybe we can have a party. I mean, you know, the way things are going with COVID, we could definitely have yeah. some kind of celebration. I mean, I think it would be nice to, uh, to have a, a, a get together and we can talk about that um, uh, in, in the future. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think if everyone's okay with that, it'd be really nice. I mean, that's what we did when, we had, when Todd was leaving. We did the same thing. So, you know. Well, it sounds Maryland, like June we do that. Yeah. Marilyn, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, yeah. Greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated. So. Thank you. Well, kind of interesting how we saw like that history today and then you can be so proud of everything you've done, been involved with. Well, you know, there's always more to do. And um, maybe, I know Christina is retired now, so maybe she can give it more than I've been able to you know, juggling a full-time job now and multiple jobs over the past seven yeah. years. So, yeah. you know, I, my, am, my ambitions are high, but you know, you, you can only do so much in a day and right. a week and a month and a year. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I can't tell you enough how many times I pass trees that I've helped plant or that we have planted, whether it's in front of Cooley Dickinson or the elementary schools, I, it's just, it means so much, you know, we can return to them 10, 20, 30 years, and we, we've really done a service to this city. So it's been really meaningful, purposeful, enjoyable. So thank you all. I just wish that the past couple of years, we've been able to see each other in person because I know I'm a people person, not a technology person. Right. <laughs> Right. Here, here, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, anyone else have any final comments? All right, so we have homework. Our homework is to look over the, the draft that I sent you plus the uh, email for the SDO. And then my homework is to look at that and create a Word document out of it that in, you know, is cleaned up so we can all review it at our next meeting. And as Molly said so eloquently, Put a bowl on it. Mm -hmm. Marilyn it said that. Well, but Marilyn, I I'm, it. Sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. My apologies. Make you correct that, Devin. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and then uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, final um, some finalization or you know for Arbor Day, and we'll have hopefully everything will be all because we have two weeks off now because there's an extra month and uh, there's an extra month in this, uh, so we're not meeting in two weeks. We're meeting actually three weeks. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Anybody has any questions about anything? Don't hesitate to reach out in an email or give okay. me a call. That'd be fine too. All right. So okay. could I have oh. Okay. Oh, oh go ahead, Ken. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just gonna say I will uh move to close the meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Can I have a second? I second. Oh, go ahead, Marilyn. Only seconds. Do I have a discussion? There is no discussion, so that will be that will be the end of our meeting. Oh, I may have a, a hands, please. All right, perfect. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It's unanimous. <laughs>